Hey guys, it's me, the Young Prepper again. We're back out in the RV. I'm gonna let you guys stare at the lambskin for a minute because today, well, actually, I'm putting out a bunch of videos today, but um, anyway, right now we are doing a video about, you guessed it, long term dry grain storage. Yep. It's pretty much a big word to say. Dried stuff, yeah. Here's a big gallon bag of dried apples. I get these from school for free. And I dry them out in my Excalibur Fortray Dehydrator. Best dehydrator ever. And I've also got one of those just dinky little round ones. Oh. This bag that my dad broke into, he got hungry. But anyway, guys, I said I'll keep you informed about how many apples and stuff I'm bringing home from school. I had a record on Wednesday, which is yesterday. Last day of school before Christmas vacation, record of 19 apples, one orange, and some pretzels, which I happily ate. Okay, so... You guys saw the apples, now we're kind of getting into more normal stuff. Not many people would stock apples, but I say for the nutrient value, you guys should stock them because they're pretty good. Okay, now in this video I'll be showing you the right way and the wrong way to store stuff. Okay, so... Those apples, right way to store them in that bag right there. What I would do is I would put those bags in a plastic bucket and seal the bucket up with some O2 absorbers. Now, I just kind of have them loose sitting like this because I kind of break into them and eat them every now and again. So I don't worry about that too much. You got to rotate your fruits and vegetables because after about a year, the nutrients start to go down. Now this is a big jar full of Splenda. Honestly, guys, I hate Splenda. I much prefer real sugar. I don't like that Truvia stuff. Just does that have the same flavor. Not as good for canning. But this is one of those seal last jars. I don't know if you can quite see that. But this is full of Splenda. This is a good way to store little packets of sugar and stuff. If you're storing loose sugar, I recommend putting it in a mylar bag, five gallon, or either two and a half or five gallon mylar bag, putting in a bunch of O2 absorbers, halfway up and then again up at the top, and sealing it inside of a two and a half or five gallon bucket. I would do the two and a half because I don't like it when my sugar clumps up. I don't know about you guys. So there's that. Um, we also got popcorn out here, rice and some pure ground black pepper so um let's do the rice this is by far the worst way ever to store rice this is a little Folgers coffee can just one little tiny like 90 cup serving ones right there uh these are actually pretty good for little aquaponics things the big cans and inside of it right inside there I've got white rice. Just dry white rice. I don't recommend storing it like this, but we're out in the RV. I kind of use this as a dehumidifier. I don't recommend storing it like this because this will absorb water. Again, put it in mylar bags with O2 absorbers or hand warmers. You gotta watch uh, Desardi One's video about hand warmers as O2 absorbers. And you can even do it by the, in the 55 gallon drum if you use the hand warmers. That won't cost you months, much. So, right here, just like, again, put it in mylar bags. Don't keep it just in here. I'm gonna get a little mylar bag, just a cute little mylar bag and put it in there. Okay, keep that in my school backpack. I actually keep beef jerky in my school backpack. A whole crap load of it. Just, uh, just because I can. If something happens, we, like, live right by a sort of active volcano. Okay, up next is popcorn. 
bad, 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 bad way to store popcorn, people, in these little plastic Ziploc bags. Don't store it in here. Don't. I see people do it all the time. I don't like it. It's not good. Again, guys, you got to do Mylar bags in buckets. You don't even need Mylar bags for popcorn if you're doing it in buckets. Rats won't even eat this stuff. It's too, it's too hard, okay? So, um... I recommend organic popcorn, like um, Amish popcorn. It's the kind I like. It's from Wabash Valley Farms. Wabash, Wabash. I, I don't know how you pronounce it, but they make good Amish popcorn. You can actually reuse it as seed. This is some Orville Redenbacher's stuff that I just bought at the store. But uh, yeah, that's that. Don't store it in these guys. Just put it in a plastic bucket. It's so much easier, okay? Uh, there's that. Up next is pepper. This also counts as for salt, other spices, stuff that comes in this. This is a little thing of McCormick black pepper. I highly recommend keeping it in the container that it comes in, guys. Keep it in what it comes in. Don't take it out. And I, I don't really want to have to open a five-gallon bucket full of black pepper. Th that would suck. That would... Uh, I don't even want to go there. So, you got the little top. You, got, you can take it out with a spoon or the sprinkle one. I'm not a fan of black pepper, but like the rest of my family likes it. I can't stand it. But, uh, just keep it in the container that comes in. Or you can put it in a little, not like little Mylar bags. So I'm, I'm talking like Mylar bags big enough to hold one jar of this. And you can seal it up, and you can put it in, like, your, um, uh, I call them medley buckets, because they pretty much have a little bit of everything, so you can put this in there, um, yeah, so that's kind of my rant about people storing foods like this, I, it's, the, the well, the apples, and the pepper is the right way to store it. And, well, the Splenda, but I, I don't like stuff that comes in packets. It's it's just weird. So, maybe I'll zoom in for you guys. We, I'll, give, I'll give you a treat. I'll actually zoom in on something. You guys complain about that. Okay, so. Alright, guys. Young Prepper's out. See you guys next time. Later.